Pretty freaky, huh? Uh, welcome to the quarter to three live stream of Frost. Uh, it's Thursday. Tomorrow I'll be streaming a game called Inside from the developers of Limbo. Today I'm going to stream this thing, which I really like quite a bit, uh, but it's not for everyone. It's kind of weird. Uh, let me throw some words at you. So, I really like this, but it's not for everyone, but for the people who it's for, it's really for. Man, that might be the worst review you'll ever hear. It's like something you would... It's like the final paragraph of a GameSpot review, isn't it? For the people who would like it, they would really like it. 7.8. Uh, Frost, let me throw some, some phrases at you here. If any of these phrases grabs you, I would say if two... Let's see, of these three... If, if two out of these four phrases grabs you, Frost is for you. Ready? Here's some words. Deck Builder. Survival. Solitaire. Minimalist. What do you think of those words? As long as you're okay, as long as none of those sends you running, screaming uh, from this stream, you're in the right place. And if you're into at least two of those words, you're definitely in the right place. I, I forgot how I found You know how I found this? Is I just stumbled across it on, on Steam. Every now and then I go and I look at, hey, what kind of new games are coming out? And this was there. The description was like, okay, I should at least take a look. I took a look and I really like it. So this is Frost. Here's some discussion about the score. Meta Baron says it's a 5 out of 7. That would be on GameSpot. I'm not scoring this yet. This is not an official review. I'm afraid I don't do video reviews. Uh, I'm a writer. All this stuff. Strictly a dilettante. I have no idea what I'm doing. Speaking of having no idea what I'm doing, if you like these videos, give them a thumbs up. Uh, I appreciate some uh, subscriptions are awesome. We are, uh, as of today, I think, 109 subscriptions shy of me drinking a beer live on the air. Yep, that'll happen when we hit 1,000. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at QT3. You can find the stuff I write at the site quarter to 3 quarter to 3com dot com. And I'd love for you to check out my Patreon campaign. Uh, even if you want to support me, just to get a sense for what I'm doing, at patreon.com slash tomchick. Let's get into some Frost. Uh, when you start up Frost, you will want to hit this. And after you watch today's stream, you may not need to hit this, because I'm going to be explaining this to you. Frost is... If I were to click this, it would show you the credits. I'm not going to show you. Frost is by a fellow named Jerome Bodine. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. B-O-D-I-N. I, I see that, and I think Bodine. Isn't that the last name of the Beverly Hillbillies? Aren't they the Bodines? Did I just date myself? I'm actually not old enough to know what the Beverly Hillbillies... I mean, I, I know Beverly Hillbillies from reruns. Uh, the studio that made it is... They're French. They're called... Get ready for this. This might be painful. I apologize in advance. The studio that made this is called Le Studio des Ténèbres, <laughs> which I think is the Studio of the Shadows. Uh, all right, we're just going to start a basic game. Scenarios are things you unlock. When you start this up, first of all, this is a game in progress. You won't see this when you start it up. When you start this up, you won't see any scenarios because you will not have unlocked them. You will only have a tutorial, which you should do. I think you can jump right into Classic. You can fiddle with your options, which are minimal, and you can leave if you want. I don't recommend that. We're going to just do a Classic game. You also won't have, I think, these two until you unlock them. For better or worse, there is a lot of unlockableness in Frost, in that when you first start playing, it's with a basic set of cards. When you finish a scenario or a game on a difficulty level, you unlock some of the cards, some additional cards, which will fold in new gameplay. Left Empty is actually saying that the Studio de Tenabra is Canadian. You might be right. I just assumed they were French because I saw French writing. But there are a lot of those French speakers in, in Canada. Chris Markison, uh, who's in Canada, I think he agrees. So I'm just going to start a game on easy just to talk you through the basics. Then we're going to do some more of these complicated games. This is a weird one. This, you just keep playing. There's no victory condition. And you are scored at the end based on how many turns you lasted. You might say, what? Turns? What is that? Well, let's get to that. Let's jump into an easy game. 
a little cute, not cute, it's bleak. It's it's kind of a little depressing, but but with a bright presentation. Uh, you got a little cutscene explaining... Uh, what does it explain? I kind of forget. Explaining uh, terrible stuff. Oh, there you're out in the uh, frozen wilderness, the icy wilderness, and there's a storm, a deadly storm, hot on your heels. And you've got to get a, away from that storm into a refuge before it catches up with you and kills you. Who are you? Well, you are these four survivors. You have two food cards. You have two material cards. Materials always wood. I don't know why they call it wood. Why they don't call it wood. Uh, but you have two material cards. Well, we'll get to that. And you have two fatigue cards, which suck. You don't like these. This is your deck of ten cards. They got shuffled. Oh, gosh, all this info I'll show you in a minute. These cards got shuffled, and you now have a hand of five of them. This here... The stock is telling you the composition of your hand and, if I pull to the bottom of the deck, your deck. Ah! It's this weird, tricky thing with the mouse where if you pull it down, this pops up. Uh, here's your draw deck. You'll have a discard pile here. So this is our total collection of cards, which we just saw. This might change some. Uh, Alright, so we now can play our hand of cards. Our goal, this right here, this frost countdown, it starts at 8. Every time we end the turn, it clicks down one to seven, to six, to five, to four, to three, to two, to, to one. And then on that last turn, uh, you fall into this gap. Uh, on that last turn, the frost storm overruns you and you're dead and you have lost. It is our first day. Each turn is a day. We have 20 turns, days, uh, basically 20 points of travel. I'll get to you in a second on that, uh, to get to the refuge. Uh, Left Empty is saying they aren't Canadian, they are French. I was correct. I think I did know about that because I briefly exchanged emails with the developer, with Jerome Bodine, and I think he might have even said something about, over here in France, blah, blah, blah. So, But that is a good point. When, I, when you see French, don't just assume it's France, right? It could be Algeria, for instance. Parts of Africa. All right, what do we do with these cards to get us closer to these 20 distances, distances, points, kilometers, whatever they are, to outrun, the refu to outrun this storm and get to our refuge? Well, what we do is we play these cards. This right here is the region we are in. We must use our resources to get past Haiti, Metabaron points out, also a good one. Lots of areas of the Caribbean. You guys say Caribbean, right? Does anyone say Caribbean? I'm never sure which is right. <clears throat> Richard Holt asks, is this game inspired by The Witcher's backstory? Uh, which is a relatively obscure reference, but I get it. Because The Witcher is being chased by The Wild Hunt. You might think, what? what does that ever do with anything? Well, The Wild Hunt spreads frost. So you could think of this as a survival version of Gwent, maybe. Richard Holt says, only Americans say it like I said it. Carib Car now I forget how I say it. Caribbean. Caribbean. Caribbean, right. Uh, he seems to apply the rest of the world, says Car Caribbean. Shoot. I've completely confused myself. If I don't think about it, one of them will naturally bubble up. I've, I have no idea which one's correct, or even American. At any rate, those islands down south of us that we're sitting on top of. So, to get through this cliff, we have to spend these resources. And you spend them by just dragging them onto the card. We don't need any food or survivors. These are people, survivors. To get over a cliff, you don't need that. Everybody knows that. To get over a cliff, you just need three materials, three woods. We don't have three in our hand, do we? Furthermore, I know from looking at my stock, this only appears on the easy game, when you're playing easy. When you play any of the real games of Frost, you got to track this stuff manually. Like a real deck builder, right? So how are we going to get three wood to get over a cliff when we've only got two in our deck? Ignore these up here for now. Oh, actually, maybe don't ignore those. Yeah, ignore these for now. These are ideas. They're basically uh, texts that you research as your survivors are working their way towards the, the refuge. All right, well, we're going to need, we're gonna need more wood. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and drag this wood here to the cliff, and look what happens. It is now out of our hand, and it's sitting underneath the region card, and we now only need two more woods. How are we going to get two more woods? Well, the cool thing about survivors, and it's distinct with survivors, wood is used for a lot of ideas. This here means if we 
not spend a wood, because when you spend it, it goes to your discard pile. When we travel through the cliff, all the cards trapped under the cliff are going to go back into our discard pile and then be shuffled into our deck. This slash here means if I discard a wood entirely from my deck, and I now know there's one under the one pinned under the cliff, here's what I have left, so there's only one wood in my deck. If I discard entirely one wood for, e for either of these, I can then add this card to my deck. We can't afford the wood for any ideas right now. We need wood to get through the cliff. All right, so the cool thing about survivors, and that's what this is here, you can send survivors out to scavenge by dragging them onto this. And I say dragging, there's actually no dragging in this game. You just click, and then you click where, where you want it to go. Oh, I am pulling an icon along. I guess there is some dragging, but I'm not holding down the mouse button. I just click what I want to do with it. Uh, the only place that's usable for survivors that's interactive on this map right now is this. You don't need survivors to get over a cliff. So when we do this, we're going to send this little dude, and this is a unique card, out to scavenge. He will come back with question mark. He'll come back with either a food, a wood, another survivor, or he might come back with fatigue, which is a big, fat, useless card that sits in our hand that we don't want. Let's see what this survivor gets us. We're going to name this guy uh, Earl. All right, Earl, see what you got. Okay, the fourth, the fifth thing that can happen <laughs> with a survivor is he or she can die. Uh, I forgot to mention that. I, we're playing on easy, so that doesn't happen as often. One of my problems with this game, it's so above board, which is one of the things I love about it, but I don't know what the risk is of dying or getting any particular good. Is it, is it equal odds for everything? I don't know. Is it weighted towards, I don't know, food, fatigue? I don't know. Uh, and Jerome Bodine does not tell you anywhere in the game. What does the question mark do? Oh, right. <laughs> the question mark is just your options, which aren't many, which is okay. Instructions is just a quick explanation of how to play. We don't need to read those. That's what I'm here for. All right, so we have one less survivor. One fewer, yeah, one, one fewer survivor uh, in our deck. One survivor fewer. That's how you do it. Let's go again. We're looking for wood. Look what we found. We found one wood. Now, we didn't lose the survivor. The survivor, I'm going to try to, went down into our discard pile. So when our deck is empty, she's going to get shuffled back in there. By the way, her name, uh, Mary Doyle. We're going to name her that. That was my awesome uh, Sarah Palin-esque character in XCOM yesterday. All right, so let's put our wood on the cliff. And we still have one more wood in the deck. Once it appears, we can assign it to the cliff, climb over the cliff. We'll be one distance. I kind of want to call these kilometers, because this is French. We'll be uh, one kilometer closer to our refuge. It's still the first day, though. What are we going to do with this food? Nothing. There's nothing. Oh! Uh, in addition to a region, a region can have an event associated with it. Oh, uh, Richard Holt says, how do how did you go down like that, Tom? Oh, you, you move the cursor down to the bottom of the screen. Now, unfortunately, I'm in a window, so it sometimes just goes out the window. But if you go to the bottom of the screen without going out of the window, it pulls up this look at your discard pile in your deck. Uh, the better view is, but it also slides out of the way. Now I can't see the frost, and I can't see what ideas are available for me to buy. So this is the default view. Uh, in addition to a region, a region will be associated with an event. Now, event is a little bit of a misleading name, but that's what they call it. Events, in this case, are survivors with whom I can trade. If I give them a food, because remember, this means I discard it from my deck. It goes away. I will then only have one food left in my deck. I then get a survivor card. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this because survivors, remember, you can send them to scavenge. They will add other food, wood, survivors, or unfortunately fatigue, or they might die, to your deck. So I'm going to go ahead and use this food with these survivors. And look, I got a new survivor card. When you get a card, it goes into your hand. You can immediately use it. Uh, let's see if we get super lucky. We're going to send this guy to scavenge. His name is uh, uh, Yevgeny. We're going to send Yevgeny to scavenge. Maybe he'll find a piece of wood for us. No, nope, he found us some food, but guess what we're going to do with that? Uh, this guy's name... Oh, look at that nose ring. Uh, this guy's name is Buford. We're going to send Buford to scavenge. Wow, here's Sally. We are so heavy on scavenger, or on survivors in this game. Oh, Sally got tired. All right, what do you do with your fatigue cards? Nothing. They just sit in your hand. There are ways later to get rid of them, but now we're done. All right, so we still need one wood to scale this cliff. 
we can cash in food for survivors, we only have one food left, uh, we'll be able to, with extra wood, buy these ideas later. But now we're going to end the turn. You'll note when we end the turn, the frost counter is going to decrement as the storm gets closer to us. The day counter is going to increment. We'll be in our second day. A new idea will come out, and we'll get a new hand of five cards. These two will go into our discard pile. Check it out. Look at all this that happened. All right. The third fatigue card, we started with two, and remember, Sally gave us one when she went to scavenge, so here's our third one. Uh, Meta Baron says, so much wasted real estate on the right-hand side. You say that, Meta Baron, but what would you do with that? Oh, I guess, you know, you could put the deck and the discard pile over here, couldn't you? Meta Baron does have a point. Uh, I, however, feel... Maybe I'm just justifying it because I like this game, but that wasted real estate gives it, gives it this, this sense of an expanse of uh, desolate, frozen wilderness. How's that for a justification? <laughs> I sound like the guy who made it defending the fact that he didn't realize he was going to have all this empty space. But yeah, you're right, a lot of wasted space. Now when I click a card, by the way, there are going to be options that pop up here, but still, all of this. When you get ideas, they will stretch out over here. So it's pretty much just this. This picture here, which is apparently me, I have four hit points. This doesn't need to be a big picture. I do like the focus on artwork, because it is minimal artwork. It's not a lot of great detailed, intricate, fancy production design. They're just minimal, evocative, moody drawings of survivors, kind of cartoony but bleak, right? Uh, and I, I kind of appreciate that the game gives the artwork lots of room to breathe, maybe. Uh, Alright, we need our last wood. Here we go. We're going to be fine. So, uh, uh, oh, Meta Baron says, can't you rest now? Yes. This rest, if I do this, will will add a day, it will add an idea card, it will also decrement the frost counter. Every day, the frost storm gets one closer to us. We do not want this getting closer to us. So what you do is when you rest, it, re uh, it you get a new hand, but you drop all the fatigue cards out of your deck. Now, we don't want to rest this turn because we can actually travel on. Uh, but, for instance, if we drew a hand of three fatigue cards and two resources of some sort, yeah, rest. Get those fatigue cards out of there. That's a great way to do it. All right, so let's uh, put the wood there. Now you'll note we have a new button. Because we've zeroed out all the requirements to scale a cliff, we can travel. Pony Carnival says, do you find the intense whiteness hurts your eyes? Pony Carnival says, Jerome Bodine could have made it feel just as frosty with a little more art direction on the background color, and it would be less painful. Uh, I'm not finding it painful, Pony Carnival. What did I watch recently that had all these, like, bright scenes in the sun? Oh, Neon Demon, uh, Nicholas Winding Refn movie. There are definitely scenes that are painful to your eyeballs because they're so bright after a dark scene, and I believe that that was the director's intent. But no, I'm afraid I, I actually don't find this painful because my eyes are sort of going to these little bits of color and blue and, and black. Uh, Pony Carnival, my suggestion, stop staring in here. Quit staring at that bit. All right, so we can travel, but before we do, let's keep this food. I don't want to tr trade this in for a survivor yet because we've only got one food. If we come up with some region that's going to require a lot of food, we're kind of in trouble. One of the reasons that I'm going to send these guys out scavenging, which risks them dying, it risks me getting more fatigue, before we leave this cliff, I would love to get a wood to either learn fire, there's two fire cards, or I call it a spear, but it's an guy. I've seen that word before, and it makes me think of, like you're saying, assy guy. Like a guy with a big butt, or whatever. But it's, it's apparently, uh, I'm guessing, maybe a Native American term for a spear? All right, let's now send this right here is Petunia. We're sending Petunia out to scavenge. Oh, and look, she uncovered Boris. Boris, go right back out and scavenge. Good lord, we have way too many people. Uh, your name shall be Norman. Norman got us some food. We're going to hang on to that. Now, this right here is uh, Curtis. Ah, we found wood. All right, do we want a spear? What's a spear for? Uh, it is to fight wolves, cannibals, and other scavengers. At this point, and those come up as event cards. At this point, we haven't run into any. Meta Baron says, hey, why don't you travel? Because I'm using up my hand of cards. I, uh, you'll note, by sending my scavengers out, I then added to my stock of... By sending my survivors out to scavenge, I added to my stock of scavengers. I got an additional food. I got this wood. 
when you send a survivor out, what the return you get for risking death is it's adding more cards to your deck. Whereas before, I only had 10 cards in my deck. I know there are three woods under here, plus the two food, the one wood here, uh, that makes six, plus the eight survivors, 14, plus the three fatigue. I have 17 cards in my deck. And if I did the math wrong, well, who cares? Uh, yeah, whatever. I didn't have a, a calculator with me, so. Uh, all right, so let's spend this wood, which means it's going to be removed from our deck. We've got three woods under here. There's only one here, so we're going to have wood left over, because when we travel, we get these back. Do we want to buy an Asagai? No, we're not going to worry about that at this point. Uh, we're playing the easy game, so I think the distribution of things like wolves, scavengers, and cannibals in this event deck uh, is much more forgiving on the easy game. I'm assuming... Uh, you know, Jerome Bodine is not that forthcoming with the specifics of the different difficulty levels, which I wish he was. So, we're instead going to learn fire. What happens with fire? Well, let's look. It is now in our hand. We don't have that wood anymore. If I just discard this, the top power fires off. In this case, it's draw a card. If I, were to ha if I had this Asagai and I discarded it, it would give me a spear resource. If I put a wood on it, basically not spend the wood, I'm not getting rid of the wood, it's just going to my discard pile along with this. I will then draw three cards. So fire is great in terms of giving you some flexibility. If you combine fire and wood, if you have wood in your hand, it gives you even more cards for more flexibility. Similarly with the acid guy, if I were to just discard it, I would get one spear. If I remove it entirely from my deck, I would get two spears, which is what you need to deal with the more difficult obstacles such as the cannibals and the scavengers. Wolves are fine. One spear will take care of a wolf. Cannibals and scavengers? Eh, they're not so easy to deal with. Alright, so we might as well click on this to get another card. Maybe we'll get a wood. Oh, we don't have any more in our deck. Uh, let's send, I think this is Petunia. We're going to send Petunia to scavenger. Oh, we got more fatigue. Alright, so at this point we're done unless we wanted to cash in our food for more survivors at this little survivor camp. We don't. We want to keep our food. Let's travel. And then we're going to get our wood back. You will note that this will count up to three again. There's our three wood. Here's our footsteps. We're moving forward. Why didn't you guys tell me to get the spear? <sighs> All right. Uh, ignore the cannibals for a second. Let me explain. We are now in the plains. To get over a cliff, you needed wood, right? Everybody knows that. Everybody also knows to get past a plain, you just need two, two apples, two foods. We have two in our deck, which at this point is a pretty big deck. Uh, we're going to have to dig around quite a bit to get the food, but we can also send these guys out to scavenge. Now, the problem with these cannibals, if we travel, they're going to ding us for one blood drop. You'll note we have four. There are other ways you can pay this. I'll get to that later. What do you do with cannibals? Well, you either spend two spear points to get rid of this card so you're safe, or you don't discard the food. You remove it entirely from your deck, two of them. So you're either killing the cannibals or you're throwing food at them, and then they'll go away. You will note in the plains, and I don't know, are specific regions related to specific ideas? I do not know. If I was a game developer, I would tell the player one way or the other, but I don't know what the case is here. Uh, all I know is that we do have now available two extractors. Those are ideas. If we burn two wood of, out of our deck, when you use an extractor without a resource, you just play it, there's a 50% chance you're going to get a food added to your deck. If you put a wood, and you're not discarding it from your deck, you're just discarding it along with the extractor, then you definitely get a food. So extractor is a, a great way to guarantee food. Unfortunately, we don't really have the wood to spend on extractors. So we're just going to deal with these cannibals and getting past this plane. However, we have a bunch of, rest in our, uh, a bunch of fatigue in our deck, so I'm just going to rest right now. Because we want to cycle this to get our wood up. Uh, no, sorry, to get food up. A lot of survivors here. All right, this wood will let us buy... Okay, watch this. I now have a wood. I don't need it to travel past the plains. There's a total of three of them in my deck. I'm going to use the wood to buy this Asagai. Now, by clicking on the bottom, I now have picked this up. I have two spear points that I use to kill the cannibals. So now we're clear to cross the plains. If I rest, I can redraw, but instead I'm just going to scavenge and hope that out of these four guys, a couple of them bring, ba bring back food. No, you brought fatigue. I think this is Sally. Sally brought fatigue. Uh, Fernando... Uh, Fernando brought wood, which doesn't do us any good, and I think that guy's name is Boris Fatih. Oh my gosh, you guys are terrible. All of you are fired. I want all of you to go home. I should have fed you to the cannibals. We can't rest once you play a card. You can only rest at the beginning of your turn. So we're going to end the turn without much to do. We can't spin this wood because these each cost two wood. 
This is more like it. We are close. Here's a new idea. Supplies. If we burn two supplies to buy this card, and then we get rid of this card, it'll go in our hand, we can get rid of it immediately, we're going to get four random cards. They might be food, they might be wood, they might be survivors, they might be fatigue. Fatigue can be considered supplies. Look at this. If I right-click on this, by the way, there's a nice little bit of tooltips telling me things. But you guys don't need that because you have me here to explain it. All right, well, first of all, let's throw some food under the plane so that we can travel them. Let's send Petunia to scavenge. All right, two woods. Do we want an extractor? I'm tempted. It'll add food to our deck. Let's scavenge and see what we come up with. It'll help us decide. All right, good. All right, now we can travel when we need to. Let's go ahead and buy an extractor. We're getting rid of the two woods. And if we discard this, there's a 50% chance we'll get a food. If we discard it with a wood, we definitely get a food. So let's go ahead and send, I think that's Ignatio, to scavenge good. Uh, shoot, I hope we get a food because then we can buy supplies. All right, extractor, give me food. No, it didn't work. All right, so we're going to travel. There's nothing I can do with one food. There's no reason to just end the turn. The frost is six turns behind us. We have 19 kilometers to go. Richard Holt says, oh, let's see. Uh, Left Empty says, I wouldn't ask you to sacrifice food to get around the cannibals, but a little blue smurf instead. Well, here's how that works, Left Empty. If we had traveled without removing the cannibals, we can take one hit point of damage off of our health. Instead of taking damage to our own health, we can sacrifice a blue guy. So instead of taking a point of damage, you can either take it off here, or you can sacrifice a blue guy. So what that is basically saying is, yeah, you can throw the cannibals either two food to feed them, you can throw them a survivor, which they'll eat, or you can use two spears against them. Richard Holt asks, and I'm not entirely clear, anyone know how I use a card's activated effect? If you mean in this game, Richard Holt, there's no uh, clicking and dragging. You basically click. If I wanted to use this effect, which I wish I could show you, but I can't, uh, I would click the bottom part. If I want to then target it, for instance, when I use a spear, I then pick up the spear icon and I click it on what I want to use. The language of this game is pick something up and then click where it can be used. Oh, here's an interesting thing. This is a farm. The farmers, if I basically sacrifice a survivor, they're not sacrifice. I'm sending them to work at the farm, him or her. If I send uh, Clarissa to work at the farm, I get two food cards, which I'm going to do because we could use a little food. we got plenty of survivors. So Clarissa, sorry, but you are now a farmeress. And then we're going to put two food in the tundra. Oh, here's some ideas. We have another extractor in this tundra. Uh, we can get a singer. What is a singer? Well, if you burn a survivor and a food, you get a singer. A singer works just like a normal survivor. But if you use a singer in conjunction with burning a food out of your, uh, your stock, you get a random number of survivors. There's a 75% chance you're going to get a random number of survivors. You might get zero. 25% chance you get zero. How many survivors? I'm glad you asked. Let's right click and check. Search for survivors. The, if you activate it, there's a chance to add X survivors to your hand. Okay, X equals... Uh, I don't see an X anywhere. For whatever reason, Le Studio de Trenabre did not decide to tell me what the value of X is. Thank you, Studio, Le Studios de Trenabre. Yeah, I... whatever. So, a lot of stuff is above board. Uh, the developer did say this was, of course, based on a physical version of the game. He prototyped before making it into a, a video game. Uh, and he and I basically told him, hey, this reminds me a lot of these solitaire card games I really like by a fellow named Shady Torby named Onirim uh, Sylveon. Uh, Castellan is a tile game, but it's similar to those games I really like. Have you considered making a physical version of this? He was like, yeah, I'd love to down the road. Uh, the prototype was physical. So there's no reason this can't be a physical version of a game, in which case, if it was a physical version, I would have to know what X equals. That would be in the rules somewhere, because I'd be playing the game, right? But you don't get to find that out in the video game version. Richard Holt says, is this game similar to the physical game Arctic Scavengers? No, not really, Richard Holt. This is very much solitaire. So at the head of the podcast, I, uh, podcast at the head of this uh, stream, I said there were four words that would be used to explain this. Deck Builder, Survival, Solitaire, 
and uh, minimalist. So this is very much a solitaire game. Arctic Scavengers is very much a head-to-head -head game. Arctic Scavengers is also a deck builder, but it's about building a deck based on what the other people at the table are doing, uh, vying against them for certain resources. This is more you're dealing with a system that's pushing back at you, a counter, which is a lot of how a lot of solitaire games work. Uh, Sid G suggests uh, maybe that singer, that X is a Roman numeral. Nice try, Sid, but I have seen this in other places. Although maybe it's a Roman numeral there as well. Uh, I have used a singer before. I never got anywhere near 10 resources, uh, 10 survivors. But I do like that uh, suggestion. Um, wait, what just happened? Did I just somehow get rid of a card? Did I just put a fatigue card under the... No, I don't know what I did. I might have accidentally spent a card. Oh, I think I've accidentally dragged a survivor there. Dag Uh Okay, let's get a free card with our fire. Why did we get two cards there? So if I come down here, fire is supposed to only give me one card. Unless I... Well, you can't see it now. Unless I use it with uh, a piece of wood. I don't know how I got a fatigue in my hand. I'm not happy with that. Alright, at any rate, uh, let's use... We can't use this for the extractor. Or, all right, so we're done here. We just need one more survivor uh, to get past the tundra. Here's our survivor. Let's, before we get too crazy, really, oh, a plant pot. You burn a food, you burn two woods, and every time it pops up, you are guaranteed another food. It's an investment for the future. All right, well, first of all, we're going to send Boris into the tundra. Now we can pass the tundra. I feel like we should buy the singer. So... Uh, the way you buy it is you click, you basically drop the icon on the singer, and it, this now fades out, so you show... Oh, I guess you could spin from turn to turn. If I ended my turn, I could come back later. I don't know why you'd want to... I do know why you'd want to do that, actually. I just learned something. So you can partially pay for ideas, it looks like. But we're going to finish off by discarding from our deck. This fella here uh, is uh, Curtis. No, no, that's not Curtis. This is uh, Abednego. Putting him there. And now we have a singer. What can we do with our singer? If we burn food, we're going to get a random number of survivors. There's a 75% chance we will. We have plenty of survivors, so we're not going to do that. But we are going to send the singer to scavenge and hope he doesn't die. All right, he got us a wood, which will let us buy another extractor. Ooh, we can buy a plant pot. All right, we're getting these two woods. That, that actually might not be wise. Uh, but we're doing it anyway. We now have a plant pot. It'll give us a food. And there's nothing to do with the food. We're traveling. It's the eighth day. We're well in advance of the frost storm. We have 17 days left. Uh, the hills require two food and three survivors. Here are three survivors. Or we could rest and get rid of this. The event in the hills is a story stone. If I burn from my hand a wood and a food, which seems awfully expensive, I can also burn a fatigue. Now, that is a little too expensive. The hills have an expedition and a trader which can get you, this is great, you turn two food, you get rid of the two food, you just discard a survivor, then you then burn this card for three wood. I would really like this. So, and the trader, uh, you burn a food and get a wood. Ah, that's good as well. All right, well, at any rate, just to avoid, let's get rid of the survivor uh, requirement on the hills. They're then taken out of our deck. It'll trim the deck a little bit. We're going to end the turn. <clears throat> Left Empty says, I think it is an and, but or. Sacrificing either discards one of your fatigues. Very good, Left Empty. You're absolutely right. That is the universal language in board games of a slash. Uh, so yeah, thanks. So the Story Stone isn't so terrible after all. Especially if you have a lot of one resource or the other. All right, we have our two food to get past the hills. Uh, I would kind of like to buy one of these guys, though. Here's a torch. What does a torch do? Well, if you discard a torch to get one scouting icon, you can then look ahead at the region or the event you choose on the top of the deck. If you burn a wood with the torch, you get two scouting icons, which let you look at two cards off of the event or the deck or the region deck, and you can burn one and you can then I think either burn one of them or put them back in whatever order you want. Um, all right, but the thing is, so we can move past the hills, or we could get the expedition. We've got a good head start on the frost. It is the easy game, so I am going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Should I? Yeah, I'm going to do it. 
You guys might be trying to talk me out of it. Alright, and now we are going to use... Is there any reason to use... We're not going to use this, actually. We're going to let this cycle through our deck rather than clogging our deck up at this point with three wood. No. Uh, what is... Yeah, let's go ahead and use it because we're going to get past this before our deck cycles. I think. Alright, uh, do we want the torch? No, we're not going to mess with the torch right now. Alright, hopefully we will get... Yeah, let's for sure get a food. Let's burn the food here, and then we're going to send Patricia to scout, and there's our other food. And with two woods, we will keep them with us and trap them. You'll note, I didn't explain this before, every time you travel, you outrun the storm by one uh, digit. Now we are definitely going to rest. We could burn this wood in our fire and draw three new cards, but with five fatigue in our deck of, what is this, 9, 16, 21 cards, let's get rid of three of them. We're just going to rest. You'll note the frost gets one closer. Scary. All right, we need a lot of food, uh, and we can burn wood to scout two cards in advance. We have shelter. Here, shelter is pretty good in that if you burn, if you just burn, uh, discard your shelter, not burn it, uh, you get rid of a fatigue card. If you discard a shelter and a wood, you know, you're building a roof, you get rid of two fatigues. We have here our expedition to get lots of uh, wood. A cleaver is an interesting idea. You burn a wood to get it. When you play it, there's a 25% chance you're going to get one wood. If you discard it, you can use it as a spear point to kill a wolf, or you can get, get two wood. But let's see, our immediately pressing issue, the singer, we can burn food to get more survivors. We're not going to do that. Let's just tuck the singer safely under the tundra, and then let's send these guys on expeditions and hopefully dig up some food. Nope, that is not food. That is also not food. Let's get a cleaver. And we're going to use the cleaver and maybe get another wood. No, that's okay. All right, and uh, this right here is uh, Robert. We're going to send Robert to scavenge. Wow, lots of fatigue. All right, we just need three food. Here's two of our food. Let's send uh, Norma to scavenge. There we go. Here's our three food. And just for the heck of it, let's see what we draw. There's our plant pot. We're going to use that to add another food. What can we do with the food? Nothing. All right, we're traveling. The frost will then be set to six spaces behind us, and we'll only have 15 distance left to our refuge. Now, uh, the Atega. Oh, you know, I was going to say, I guess it's colored differently because Atega has lots of trees. I confess I don't know what Atega is. I've seen that word before. But we have a wolf in our way. What do we have in our deck to deal with the wolf? Well, unless you remember, the game isn't telling you. Because as you get ideas, the stock does not track ideas. And remember, this stock readout only appears on the easy difficulty. Uh, so like any deck builder, remember what you got, or cheat and take notes. <clears throat> okay, there's a story stone, which uh, if, if you burn the story stone, it gets rid of a fatigue. It's going to cost a wood. And another cleaver. We are going to need two survivors and three food. Uh, let's definitely get this food, and then we're going to pay our food requirement. We will pay our one survivor requirement. We're going to end the turn. We want to get, I think we have a cleaver in here. We want to get our cleaver out. Do we have a spear? I forget. At any rate, we want to get rid of that wolf. Otherwise, he will ding us for one health, or he'll kill a survivor when we leave. Chris Markinson says that Tega is a dual land, because Chris Markinson is apparently a magic nerd. Is that what that means? All right, lots of wood here for some good options. I think we'll be getting a story stone and a fire. Uh, we're going to use uh, this guy right here, I believe, is Boris. We're going to use Boris to get through the Tega. But first, let's get this fire. We're going to fuel this fire with a wood to get three cards from our deck. Let's keep the draw. Oh, or do we just want to buy a story stone? Let's. All right, here's what we're doing. We're buying the cleaver. We are going to discard the cleaver to punch the wolf. And now we're safe. Now, let's use this wood to again draw three cards. I don't have any wood to get the story stone to get rid of this, but I could send people on expeditions. Let's do it. All right, this guy right here is uh, Harry. Oh, look, Harry brought back Gandhi. Sending Gandhi to scavenge. 
Uh, Alright, this is what we want. Find the story stone, and now we're using the story stone to get rid of that fatigue. And we will send this guy... Now, do we want to risk these guys? At a certain point, you have to ask yourself, do I want to risk these guys scavenging? When you ask yourself that, you, of course, are going to base your decision on the information about how likely it is they're going to die. How likely that is, is... Oh, the game doesn't tell us. Thanks, game. But just to risk not dying, and I think we've got a decent balance. It would be nice to get some wood, but I don't want to risk getting a whole mess of, uh, of fatigue. And my experience so far is that wood is the resource least often demanded in a region, because it's often used, as, used for ideas. So we're just going to go ahead and travel. We're outrunning the frost a little bit, that much closer to the refuge. Chris Morganson is just confessing that he is indeed a magic nerd. See, so, so, see, to get past mountains, you only need one wood. Mountains are more about food and survivors. So, if we not not burn from our deck, but discard a food, a sanctuary lets us draw a card. But we're going to need our food in the mountains. So, okay, first of all, let's put this wood here. Uh, torch, a traveler. Interesting. We don't know. Oh, trader, not a traveler. Yeah, we saw him before. And let's go ahead and put these two guys and pay that. Now it's only going to take one food to get through these mountains. Let's end our turn. All right, we'll get through the mountains. We can also draw some cards to do some deck management in the sanctuary. Another cleaver. Uh, I do want to make sure to get some more spear points in our deck. Uh, there's not much we can do. All right, well, let's just go ahead. First of all, let's get the food from our plant pot. Let's spend it at the sanctuary to draw more cards. Ouch. Oh, let's at least go ahead and use the one on the mountains. Uh, our extractor. Let's see if it gives us food. Nothing. Uh, and let's... We could burn the cleaver and get two wood for sure. We've got one wood in our stock. There's one under the mountains. Um, if we had two wood now, what could we buy? Eh, nothing to note. Let's just go ahead and burn it to see if it gives us a wood. 25% chance. Nothing. All right, we're good. Let's travel past the mountains. We're still uh, outpacing the frost nicely. Some tool makers will let us burn food in exchange for wood, which we might consider doing, because look at all the food that we've got. Uh, in addition, we can do some supplies. We have another singer if we need survivors, but we're good there. Uh, all right, so we're going to need, again, another mountains. Two food, two survivors, one wood. Let's just try our chance. There we go. And we did not get our survivor. A shelter for wood. We could uh, get a singer. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to burn out of our deck two food. We now have supplies. It's going to give us four random cards, brand new to our deck. One of them's a survivor, so we're going to two of them are fatigued. We can travel now. Uh, we have two woods to get a shelter, which I like the idea of that. So we're spending two wood, getting them out of our deck. Uh, we are now definitely wood hungry. We have cleavers in here, though. We can trade in for wood. And we're going to discard that to get rid of a fatigue. And we're going to go ahead and add another food to our deck with our plant pot. And we could burn the food for wood, which I think we will do with the tool makers. Let's burn one more. All right, let's travel. Again, we're nicely outpacing this frost storm. Look at all the survivors. All right, snowy tundra, as everybody knows, you need three food and one survivor to get past the snowy tundra. Speaking of survivors, we are now dealing with some real jerkwad survivalists. Unlike wolves, where you need a spear point, you can get past a survivalist by either poking him with a spear to kill him, or just chucking a piece of food at him, because he's hungry like you are. All right, with our survivors, well, let's go ahead and spend one. Boris goes to the tundra. Now, we're going to need a lot of food. I don't like how much fatigue we have in our deck, but let's go ahead and just start sending them to scavenge. We have a wood for a story stone. Let's do that. And now we're going to burn this to get rid of that fatigue. Let's send some scavengers out. Uh, yeah, more scavenging. Uh, that does not help us. More scavenging. That does not... Oh, we could buy a shelter. Yeah. Yeah, let's do a shelter, because I, I like having no fatigue in my deck. Left Empty says, you burnt food for wood, putting your wood number back to two from zero, but you seem to regenerate wood to three each time you travel. No, 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 you don't regenerate wood. Anything that gets put underneath the region goes back into your deck. Uh, otherwise, the only thing you get from travel is whatever you put underneath the region. 
Uh, and let's see. All right, so we can't travel yet. We haven't dealt with these survivalists anyway. We're going to end the turn. All right, we can get rid of a food to deal with the survivalists. We've got plenty of food to do that. We need food to get through the tundra, though. We can spend food to bring an explorer up, who will then start to let us manipulate, at the cost of food, the event and region decks. But let's see. Let's go ahead and get the explorer. Mm, yeah, let's do it. I like the idea. We've got some good distance from the frost. Uh, so we're going to get rid of a food. And this right here is Rasputin. All right, the explorer can be used as a survivor, but if we burn a food with the explorer, we can then manipulate this deck. So let's just go ahead and do that. So do we want to look at two places or two events? Places I'm not so much concerned about. Uh, we don't have a lot of spears, so I'm going to look at the events. Yeah, we don't want the survivalist, so we're going to choose this viewpoint as the next event. So you guys help me remember, am I discarding this? I think the tooltip tells me, actually. I could have looked it up. Am I discarding this or just putting it underneath the viewpoint? I don't know the answer, but we'll take a viewpoint next. Uh, all right. What do we got going? Send the singer out to scavenge. Maybe get some food. Uh, we can burn this, by the way, to get a spear point, but we're not going to do that. We're going to keep this on our deck. And let's send the singer to scavenge. Got another survivor. Scavenge. And got a fatigue. Great. Thanks, survivor. The Asa guy is good. So if we burn a wood for that, we can definitely poke the survivalist. Okay, we have two free redraws. Let's go ahead and get rid of the food there. We want that. Um, yeah, scavenge. Scavenge. If you bring me back a wood, good. We'll get three cards now. Um, did I forget to... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to use the wood on the acid guy. So we're kind of low on food, although we've got two under here. We're not going to give the survivalist the food, because we're going to use that to pass here. Let's go ahead and draw, see what we get. Fatigue, great. Let's scavenge, see what we get. A wood. All right, so we're going to use the wood to get an Asagai, a spear, and not discarding it, which will get us two spear points. We're just going to use it to poke the survivalist, get him out of our way, spin the food, and travel on. And our next event is going to be a scouting thing, where you get uh, scouting points. Still way ahead of the frost. And another Taiga. Taiga, Taiga. Uh, good, let's use this shelter to get rid of that fatigue. We're down to three fatigue in our deck. We need two survivors. Uh, we do not need to keep the explorer for his scouting. We could do that up here at the cost of wood. We have four woods. We do not need much wood for uh, Artega, so it might be worth securing us from a hostile uh, event. And I think you can, of course, when you look at the regions, you can discard a more difficult region for an easier region. But for now, let's spend these two fellas here. And let's go ahead and get a torch. Let's go ahead and try this. Let's look at the events. I forgot, was it the wolf that we had before? Well, at any rate, we're going to take a campsite. We don't want to deal with a wolf. And we're going to need three food to get through this Tega. The frost is getting closer. All right, well, this plant pot will give us one food, and now we'll scavenge, and hopefully Gandhi will bring us back a food. Nope, Gandhi. Boris, how are you doing? Yeah, it's a wood. Uh, nothing really worth spending it on. Uh, Gerald? Yes, good. And uh, Iphigenia? Nope. What is that? It's kind of crazy. Oh, it's probably just a scarf. Yeah. All right, and uh, that is Sarah with her scarf. Didn't bring us a food, but with two woods, we can get nothing up here. We could get a torch. We're not going to. Uh, all right, we're going to end the turn. There is our one food. If we had a fatigue, we could get rid of it. Uh, do we want to buy... Look at this cannibalism card. Burn a survivor. You, you, uh, you buy it with a survivor that gets discarded. Later, when you burn a survivor, you get two foods. Let's buy the cannibalism idea. We may not use it, but just to have it handy. Because really, it didn't cost us anything. Uh, the survivor went to our discard pile instead of burning it. Let's go ahead and use this food here. Uh, and you guys scavenge, because if you bring back a fatigue, we can get rid of it with the shelter. Oh, I forgot, you can also die. Well, at least our singer didn't die. And we have a wood, which we could get a torch with it, but no, I don't think so. And we're not going to cannibalize anyone, let's just travel. Eleven, ten kilometers, we're halfway to the refuge. Here's our campsite. We knew that was coming up. All right, two woods to get through the subterranean region and a food. Look at this. 
cut him. Let's just see if we're going to get a free wood. No, do we want to send this guy to scavenge? Eh, I'm kind of liking this balance here. Yeah, go ahead, scavenge. See what you can come up with. A food, which doesn't really help us, so we'll just travel. Oh, left empty was paying attention. Let's see. It is subtracted from the deck if... Wait, what? How is this file? It's just like the one you had. Oh, okay. So you do when you when you scout... Uh, so this implies to me that the wolf we selected was the second card. Oh, yeah, I can just right-click next time it comes up, and we can find out. Meta Baron says, stupid question, what's the red slash across certain items? The red slash is the difference between discarding a card, here I just discard a wood, and burning a card out of your deck entirely. Here, I have to burn a deck enti a wood entirely out of my deck in order to buy these. Yeah, Sid G says, uh, red slash is removed entirely from deck. All right, let's see if the extractor... We'll definitely make sure the extractor gets us food. And we'll put two food in here. We will put our scarf-wearing Sarah here. We're in no hurry because we want to be able to poke the wolf away before we travel. Frost is four turns away. Uh, no wolf poking options here. But let's do this and this just to make sure. Uh, do we want to get this out. Yeah, we've got a lot of wood. Let's go ahead and do that. We will draw a free card. We will get our additional food. And with the food and survivor... No, we don't want an explorer. We don't want another plant pot. Uh, let's... We've got lots of food, so yeah. Let's use this food on this explorer. It burns the food. And let's look at the events. We don't want the survivalist. So, I'm pretty sure that it's going to go Wolf Camp Survivalist, right? I could be wrong about that. Oh, again, I'm supposed to right-click and check. Why don't you guys remind me of this stuff? Uh, all right. Well, we're not tra... You know, maybe we should travel. It's just one point of damage. We have plenty of survivors to burn and plenty of health. You know what? Forget this, Wolf. We don't care. Fine. Bite us, Wolf. What do we care? So, we can now, what this blood drop is saying is, before you do anything, you must account for the blood drop. Why is that? Is this right? I don't... I screwed something up. That's not supposed to be there, is it? Uh, so, the blood drop, I can either take it from my health, or I can say goodbye to uh, Brunhilda here. Which we're going to do, because look, we have 12 survivors in our deck. Goodbye. We still have 4 health. Now, look, look at all these. Do we just spend one food and then discard? No, we rest and get rid of three out of the four foods. <coughs> Alright, we have a good number of food, so we can throw a, a food to the survivalist to get him off our back. But we also need a lot of food to get through a lake. Everybody knows that to get across a lake, you need three apples and a log. Oh, no, no, let's poke the survivalist. Yeah, you guys probably saw that before I did. Chris Marcus said I clicked on the survivalist to choose him. Yeah, so user error, misclick. The lesson here being, if you ever need to reach a refuge in a snowy, desolate wilderness, don't choose, don't appoint me the leader. All right, let's do some scavenging, because it's okay if they die. Uh, yep, let's spend this wood. A pickaxe could maybe give you a food, which makes no sense to me. Look at this. Really? Because you don't use pickaxes to get food. Maybe the idea is you're chopping down uh, an apple tree. Uh, or, if you discard a pickaxe with a survivor, you get a food. Yeah, it seems like a pickaxe would get you material, right? Like stone. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, if we get rid of a couple food, we can get supplies. The priority is on food, though. So, uh, what, am I, what was I looking at? Yeah, so let's put that in our lake. Now we only need to throw three apples into the lake to cross it. We'll send some scavengers out. Oh, shoot, we just lost a singer. Ouch. Too bad I don't know the odds of that happening. There, that's good. We'll take that. Uh, we have no fatigue to deal with with our shelter, so it's just going to get discarded. We're three turns away from the deadly frost. Fortunately, we got our two foods, and we got some free draws. Let's just see what we can get. A trader, pickaxe, the extractor, extra supplies. Let's just do our draws here. We want to do our draws. It would be awesome if we pull this fatigue up. Nope. Let's see. Is there anything worth buying? 
Uh, I don't really want that pickaxe. I'd rather keep the wood. Uh, and I need the food, so let's just go ahead and burn the food and scavenge and travel. So let's see what we get. Another survivor. Lots of wood. We actually do have a good amount of wood. I don't think I want that extractor, though. Alright, so we're going to burn these two. And let's travel. Alright, look at this. If you thought a lake was tough with three food and a wood, a dead lake, you really have to stock up on, on your carbohydrates, on your calories, I mean, to get past a dead lake. Which means... Uh, sorry, whatever your name was. We just ate that dude. Sometimes you gotta do that. Reminds me a bit, do you guys know a game called... Shoot, what's the game where you're in a spaceship going to Mars? It has some terribly unintuitive uh, name like Tharsis or Tharent... Thur uh, I think it is Tharsis. It's a dice-based game, kind of like this, survival-based, where you roll dice and sometimes you have to eat your crew members. What is this black dot? Hmm, I don't know what to make of that. Matthew Mangy says, basically, is this digital Robinson Crusoe? No, because Robinson Crusoe is a terrible game. Uh, Tharsis, yes, left empty. But thank you, uh, and thank you, Sid G, for confirming that. All right, so we're going to need one more food to get past a dead lake, and we're going to have to end the turn. This will give us a wood, which... Uh, let me see. No, we're going to have to end the turn. We're going to be only three turns from the frost storm overcoming us and killing us. We're seven kilometers still from our refuge. All right, well, there's the food to get us through the dead lake. Do we want to burn survivors for to food. I kind of like this proportion here. And do we want to buy a cleaver? Do we want to buy a singer? We can't. Do we want to buy an extractor? No, I like our spread here. Let's just travel. Alright, and we come to... Is this really a word, or is this a typo? In Lancis? <laughs> That's like when your sister walks away from the coast. Yeah, I have no idea what it is. It must be a French word. All right, tool makers, where we can burn food for wood. We can also burn food for supplies. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm 99% sure we're going to make this. Again, this is the easy version. Once we do this easy, we're going to play on hard, and I'm going to show you guys how difficult this game is. All right, so let's go ahead and take a, let's throw a log on the fire and draw a lot of stuff, not the food that I would have liked. All right, well, let's put our one food in there. Let's get uh, whatever that dude's name is in there. Oh, shoot, I should have sent that guy to scavenge and then kept the explorer. Uh, it'd be great to get some... Well, we only have one fatigue, so these are kind of useless. Uh, we're not going to be doing any supplies, so... All right, explorer, scavenge, find me a food. <laughs> I really, really, really... Jerome, Jerome Bodin, I'm disappointed in you. You've made this really cool game. Why don't you tell me... Can I right-click on this, maybe? No. Why don't you tell me the odds of stuff happening? All right. Well, uh, I think we're done. There's nothing we can do with the way that's in the turn. Matthew Mangy says, Is this an iOS game? Bite your tongue, Matthew Mangy. Uh, let's see. No, it's only PC. It's only as far as I know. All right. There's our food to get past the uh, inland sis. Pony Carnival suggests it's a Kelly One, Kelly One synopsis for the movie Inland. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, let's... Do we want to add a food? I kind of almost don't want to add a food to our deck. Yeah, I do. Alright, we're going to throw a lot of food at the inland, sis. And, uh... You're not even going to scavenge. Yeah, scavenge, just in case. Because if he comes back with a food... Uh, I was going to say, if he comes back with a food, we're going to buy supplies from the inland, sis. And I really want to know, are ideas related to regions? That would be nice to know. It would be nice if the regions had some character beyond the specific resources you needed to get across them. All right, again, we're four turns from the frost. We are five clicks from refuge. Story stone. It would be nice if our two fatigues came up, although fatigue hasn't really been bothering us. We could eat someone, which I don't think we're going to need to do because look here. Guaranteed food. Da 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 da. Travel. What I just did there, that's typically how quickly the turns go. This is a super brief, uh, not brief, but a super snappy game for the most part, uh, which is one of the things I like about it. Uh, Chris Markinson looked up Island Sis and says it's an ice sheet. 
Oh, no, left empty. Scandinavian word used in French. It's a massive glacier. Chris Markinson explains, yeah, glacier's an ice sheet, right? Left empty. He's looking things up in a dictionary. Thank you so much. Uh, left empty. Uh, Jason McMaster asks, where's Nixon in this game? Someone made that joke earlier, and I had no idea what they were talking about. They said something about Nixon, and I get it now, McMaster. Uh, all right, we need some wood. Let's see. So, uh, well, first of all, let's put one food here. We're going to send Sarah and her scarf to scavenge. Sarah brought us some wood. Now, here's the thing. I've got nine wood in my deck. I'm going to go ahead and put this wood in here and draw three cards. And either get scavengers to go for more wood or get more wood to throw in the river. Because, as we all know, you need two woods, a food, and a scavenger to get across the river. All right, that didn't work out so well. Oh, you know what it did? Look at this. I'm going to get rid of the cleaver. Shoot, what happened? What? That was not what I meant to do. All right, here's the problem. If you click in this box, you're going to choose one of these two. If you click outside the box, it's assuming you're doing this. If you click on this and you hit above this little boundary here, if I click up here, it's assuming I'm wanting to do out here. I think that's what just happened. All right, I'm very mad at this game. Uh, all right, with food, we can get free draws, and it doesn't burn the food. It just discards it, so let's see if we can get some wood this way. No, we got a survivor. Uh, we can just keep cycling our food. I can do this all day, Sanctuary. All right, there's a the wood. Uh, let's go ahead and draw this. That's not a wood. We could poke something if we wanted. Let's send this guy to scavenge, and there's our wood. Oh, shoot, but we still need a survivor. That's okay. We're, we're doing well. Uh, all right, end the turn. There is our survivor. And do we want to just cycle some cards, see what happens? Is there anything we want to buy? We're not going to buy a shelter. We've only got two fatigue. That's not really an issue. We've got shelter. Do we want a trader to add a survivor that can give us some wood in exchange for food? Let's go ahead and do that because it'll sort of even out this. Oh, whoops. I just screwed up. Dead gummit. Because I can't tell the difference between a wood icon and a food icon. Uh, so, if we travel, we're going to have spent that survivor for naught. Uh, is there a way to trade wood for... Nope, alright. Well, I'm okay with that. What I meant to say is, yeah, let's get rid of a survivor so we have few of them in our deck. Alright, three clicks from the refuge. With the storm, five turns behind us. I got a good feeling about this. Tega, we've been there before. We know it doesn't need wood. Uh, so we'll be able to throw wood there if we get any. But let's go ahead and put in our two survivors, our two food. Let's get a free draw. If we get a survivor, we will just breeze right through this Tega. I mean, I'm sorry, a, a food. So the game knew what I was talking about, even if I didn't. We're two clicks from our refuge. And six whole turns ahead of the frost. Look at this, a scattered Tega. Not to be confused with a regular Tega, which I think a regular Tega needs three food and two survivors. When a Tega's scattered, you need less food to get through it. Everybody knows that. Uh, anything you want to buy? Nope, we'll just go ahead and do this. This is the, kind of the end stage of the game. Uh, nothing. Uh, let's see. Gandhi, you go there. We could have eaten someone, but we don't really need food. Uh, let's just see if we can draw wood so that we can ensure that our final event and region are easy peasy. Come on, wood. Go. Yeah, alright, so we're going to burn it, and then we just don't want a bad event because we have plenty of time to get through whatever the place is. Actually, even if we got a bad event, We've got health left. I mean, I've won... Oh, well, see, there you go. Well, obviously, the wolf is less dire than cannibals. So we're choosing the next event. You don't click on the one you want to discard, like I did before, just to test you guys. Only Chris Markinson passed the test. You click on the one you want to happen. So, hello, wolf. We will say hello to you. And let's go meet the wolf. And we don't even care if the wolf bites us, because we have plenty of health. We have plenty of survivors. So all we need are two food... And we're going to do the food from the extractor. We're going to do that, we're going to do that, we're going to do that. We don't care about the wolf, but actually... So don't click up here, click down here. And then kill the wolf, and then travel to win the game. What happens when you win? Glad you asked. Now on easy, I don't know if this is the case. A new scenario, a new character. Check this out. We now have... I'd never seen these before. These are now mixed... Ow. All right. When you finish a game, when you win, if you lose, it just says, oh, sorry, you lost, you're dead. Ha ha. When you win, you unlock stuff. So I think new characters referring to these, or all these. I'm not entirely sure what that means. So I think it means, yeah, these 
Because these are ideas, not characters. What does that mean? I'm intrigued. I think I know where to look. Uh, we didn't have pickers and gatherers before uh, in the, the rotation of cards. So it is basically expanding the suite of cards we're using. Do you guys know the game Hand of Fate? A very cool deck management game with a longer meta game about unlocking cards and you pick which ones are going to go into your deck and you have a whole collection and the more you play the bigger your collection and the more your options for building a deck that's what this game is that's what frost does so while we will now have pickers and gatherers mixed into the mix before we had a lone survivalist and you could get through him by chucking a piece of food or a spear at him this survivalist, and you guys, I, you guys guess as good as mine. I'm going to right-click in a minute. I don't know what this icon is. I have never seen this in the game before. Furthermore, I don't know what this means. If you give him a Santa's bag of toys, he will then ask you three questions. I don't know. Let's right-click. Yeah, good. Okay. Thank you, Jerome Bodine. Why couldn't you do this when I right-click on the uh, survival sca scavenge dialogue? All right. We know that it costs this. Uh, I still don't know what this means. I'm guessing this is a resource that's going to get folded in the game at some point. Uh, you'll get this if you defeat the event. I like that. So this is the loot you win. I like that. And if we lose, if we go past it without defeating it, we take a point of damage. Interesting. Huh. <laughs> Jason McMaster, uh, who apparently can't distinguish between an E and an I thinks this says pecker. No, McMaster, not everything is about a penis, McMaster. <laughs> MWT Bone says, I don't get what's so worrying about a frost when you're in an Arctic environment already. Excellent point, MWT Bones. What the cutscene shows you, and I should have let you guys watch this so this confusion wouldn't have happened, it's not just a frost, it's like a killer once in a millennia deadly apocalyptic frost storm thing that's that's going to kill you so you're right the word frost up there seems a little innocuous richard holt says this game is hard on easy no richard holt you have no idea that, that i was never in any danger of losing because remember even when i hit an obstacle uh and i had a the deck of cards i had was just replete with all the resources I needed. Plus, it was tracked over here on the left. We're now going to play the real game, where, first of all, this stuff isn't tracked, and second of all, we're not going to have nearly as e easy a time of it. You'll see. So, uh, we're also going to go up against survivalists. The bad news is, they're tough, and I don't know what that is. I guess you can talk to them. You can say, hey, dudes, uh, we're, we, uh, we feel you. Don't attack us. And when you do that, you get three resource cards. So, all right, And I think I know where to look for this, so I'm going to click past this screen. All right, so the tutorial teaches you how to play the classic. You pick hard, medium, easy, or endless, or you go back. Uh, the scenario, I think, is where a character gets dropped. Let me just see. Because I have a leader in here. Yes! That is the new character. All right, the scenario, if I play the leader game, check this out, you guys. Uh, and again, this is just totally winning me over. Uh, together we can do it. Yeah. Uh, that's just the cutscene. I'll press escape to skip. Oh, uh, so... It, it, Somebody's first language is in English. I, that's not fair. Somebody forgot to put a verb in that sentence. <laughs> Unless it's trying to create some Tom Hanks style post apocalyptic argot, uh, like in that Wachowski Brothers uh, mess of a movie, in which Tom Hanks plays 20 or 30 different roles. Alright, so there's the cutscene touching. What it's showing you is a family. This is now explaining hey, in this scenario, you guys can read. You're going to have survivors, your initial four survivors, and they're all going to be mixed, m marked with a star. There's the mom, the dad, the, the, I think they have, what, two kids. Uh, if you ever lose any of them, you lose the game. So, if you hit OK, here's your starting cards. Yeah, uh, dad, mom, kid. They have stars. If any of these is ever lost, for instance, if you send them to scavenge, and we all know clearly what the danger is. When you send them to scavenge, we know exactly what the percentage chance is that they're going to get lost. And we see the die roll. Oh, wait. No, we don't. Yeah. Uh, so if you send them to scavenge and they die, you lose the scenario. Look, where's our little stock thing? Where did it go? Yeah, we don't get it. This white space is suddenly used a little bit. Our objective... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We have to go 25 clicks. Listen to me. Super military talk. 25 clicks to reach the refuge. Our objective is to protect the family. 
we... What are these? I guess you can always do these things. This is new to me. So I guess these are in the scenarios. So I can always burn a food to have a 50% chance of getting... I'm right-clicking in nothing. But a 50% chance of getting multiple survivors? Is that what that means? Is it next? Or just... The question mark says to me a certain number. At any rate, I can always burn a health to get rid of two fatigue. So this is a... Uh, these are the scenarios in this game. So what we just unlocked... Let me get out of here. What we just unlocked was a mediator scenario, and I want to see what that is. I wonder if this is where it introduces those speech bubbles. I'm going to let you guys enjoy this uh, cutscene. Let's we'll make sure that there are verbs in each of the false sentences. Uh, okay, it doesn't really need a verb. Fair enough. It's an implied verb. I'll take that. Tom MC says uh, it's making him think of Arctic Scavengers. Yeah, we had a question about that earlier. The difference being, this is very much a solitaire style game. In this scenario, the frost won't kill you. Travel 50 times. <laughs> so you don't have the fail state counter. How do you lose then? Oh yeah, I guess you lose your health, right? What does this mean? So you can burn a point of health to talk your way through. But in the survivalists, if you remember, they're just going to do a point of damage to you anyway. All right, I'm a little unclear on the speech bubble. And I'm right-clicking nothing, but... Yeah, so there's no frost counter, and here's our objective, uh, and you can click on it at any time to see what your progress is towards that, which is helpful. So these scenarios are just little ways they tweak the gameplay. They give you different kinds of objectives. I'm not going to be doing a scenario right now. I don't know what happens when you beat a scenario. If I was a game designer, I would put special unlockables, like specific cards that you could only get behind scenarios. Either that, or I would track uh, your score on a scenario somehow, so you can try to beat your score. All right, we're not going to do that. We're now going to play the for real game of Frost by playing on hard. Here we go. Classic. Uh, this will just continue. I do like this. You can quit out of a game, and it'll save it. You only get one save, though. So don't try to save scum your way to a high score. I don't want any of that from you jokers. Uh, Chris Marcus is saying, for the survivalists, I guess you would sacrifice the health to get the talk resource so you could... Oh, very good, Chris Markinson. Chris Markinson, already way better at this game than me. Uh, if we recall back to the iconography, if you defeat the contest, you get three resources. If you pass the contest without uh, defeating it, you're going to lose a health. So, rather than... So there's a reason to win the contest rather than lose it, even if it costs you a health point. So, Chris Markinson, you're absolutely right. Very good catch. All right, here we go. We're going to play. So it's going to lose this game, which we didn't care about anyway. We're now playing on hard. Endless, I don't know what the difficulty is, but Endless just takes away the refuge counter. You just survive as long as you can, and I'm happy to say, I don't. there's no high score list, but it does tell you at the end of the game whether or not you beat your best previous score. So it does have that going for it. Here we go. We're going to play on hard. And let's see how... Uh, I've never beat this on hard, by the way. Uh, it's always the same cutscene, I think, whatever the difficulty, when you're playing the classic mode. Okay, on hard difficulty, you have to... Oh, right, 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 I should have told you guys this. On easy difficulty, you guys saw how that went. On medium difficulty, you have to reach the refuge and fulfill one objective out of two. On hard difficulty, as this is telling us here, we have to reach the refuge and fulfill two of three objectives. What are those three objectives? Glad you asked. Oh, here's our starting deck. It's always the same. What? Oh, I guess find the objective. Okay, so find the refuge is always one. Oh, I know. So on medium, I think you have multiple objectives. Find the refuge is one of them. So on medium, you can either win by finding the refuge or satisfying one of these other two conditions. On hard, you have to satisfy two of the three. So, what does farm 16 mean? Gather 16 food, right. And then health. How would we ever get 12 health? Oh, lose 12. So I guess this involves... I'm assuming then that sacrificing a survivor means losing a health point? I would like to know that. Because, of course, there's no way to lose 12 of these. All right, so immediately we are confronted with a Tega. Which is a relatively expensive thing. Now... If you guys recall, and here's where, right off the bat, this is difficult, 
What's in our starting deck? Well, we don't have a stock, so we don't know what's in our deck currently. But if you remember, our starting deck was uh, four fit survivors, two food, two wood, and two fatigue. Wait a minute. With two food, how are we ever going to get through a Tega? Well, that's just saying, okay, you're going to have to scavenge, even to get past this first territory. So we have to scavenge. So let's just start sending people out, because we know we don't have in our deck enough food. Uh, let's just start cycling survivors and hope we get food. Now with the two, eh, we don't have anything to poke a wolf with. We have a picker, or as Jason McMaster thinks, it is a pecker. So this is weird. You spend a food to gamble for the chance to get three food, right? I don't know that that's a wise use of food. I don't know. Someone is going to have to do the math on, on that. Lots of wood here and nothing to spend it on. So uh, let's keep scavenging. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's keep scavenging because we need to get another food. Like, that's a priority. Good lord, seriously? Wait a minute. How am I getting four wood? Oh, oh, because scavenging. Duh, I'm just answering my own question. Oh, my God. Now you guys with the wood. Jeez, a peach. All right, seven turns from the frost. Cave. And the two... Uh, all right, so do we rest to get rid of the two fatigue in our deck early on? Or do we satisfy the two food requirements? Now, I kind of wish... One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Like, I don't even have a count now of my how many cards are in my deck. So all of that... Because if I was playing the physical version of this, I would count, okay, how many cards are in my draw deck, right? You should know that. Nope, Jerome Bodine doesn't want me to know that. All right, thanks, Jerome. Uh, I'm going to rest. Oh, look at the distance. 25. Good lord. All right. And with the wood already, for Pete's sake. All right, well, we're going to do this. We're going to get a fire, and we have plenty of wood, and we're just going to draw a metric ton of cards. All right, let's try to get... Jeez, with the wood, quit bringing me wood. Oh, my god. Well, obviously, we know why this is happening, because we know the odds of getting any given resource when we scavenge, right? We know the odds. Oh, no, we don't. Uh, well, yeah, at least it wasn't a wood. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and spin that. Uh, nothing to spin the wood on. Wood is useless in a taiga with these ideas, and we can't throw a log at a wolf. Everybody knows. Left Empty says, would you count the cards in the deck even if it's prohibited by the rule? There's never a rule that says you can't count the cards in a deck of cards. I've never seen that in any board game of all time that I know of. Uh, all right, Chris Margitson, thank you so much. Is reminding folks tomorrow at 7 p.m. for the stream for Inside, a platformer, I guess it is, from the developers of Limbo. Uh, I'll be giving away six games, of which four at least, maybe more, four of them at least do not suck. Six games to six different people. Uh, yeah, so let's burn the wood. Let's get, uh, all right, we're still going to need food. Bring me a food. Uh, that is not a food. Yeah, what? Oh, my God, I couldn't get, all right, well, there we go. And then we'll put in the two survivors. And we're just going to suck up the point of damage from the wolf. Now, do we want to take the point of damage or give it to a survivor if we draw one? Well, I don't know. Is there any point? No. All right. Uh, well, we have to take this here, which I'm okay with. Now, look. You only have 11 more health to lose. All right. Yep. All wood, this wood, nothing to do. All right. Well, let's get a cleaver. Uh, the cleaver is just going to add wood into our deck. It will give us a point, a uh, spear point. Uh, yeah, because the wood's not going to do us any good. All right. And I could have, by the way, just ended my turn to discard the cleaver instead of clogging my deck with wood, which might have been a better idea. Uh, nothing I can do here. Uh, food could have given us more draws. Richard Holt says, what's putting fatigue cards in my deck? Uh, the only way, you, you start with two fatigue cards, and then when you scavenge, remember when you scavenge, you're going to get either a food, a wood, a survivor, or a fatigue. Now, the odds of giving any one of those four things, uh, we know that the odds are, oh, wait, no, we don't know, because Jerome Bodine didn't want, us, didn't want to tell us. Am I hitting that point too hard? <laughs> I really do feel strongly, if you're going to make a board game, if you're going to base a design on a board game, there are a few basic things you want to do, one of which is be very upfront about the mechanics. You know, don't hide this stuff from me. This is an important decision, is do I send this guy to scavenge? 
if you ask the player to make a decision, for Pete's sake, give him information on which to base that decision. Me blindly throwing a guy into this little blender is not is not a viable way to translate a board game, a physical card game, into a, a video game. Jerome Bodine, who has otherwise done a fantastic job, I will say, but uh, there are a few things that really bother me. All right, let's see if we can get a... Okay, well, actually, let's do this, and then we will spend this here, and maybe draw... We still need food, don't we? All right, let's do that, and we will maybe get... Uh, wood, quit with the wood already, for Pete's sake. Oh my god, with the wood. If I was a video game designer, or a board game designer, I actually might make the odds... I would do this. If I was a board game designer, if I was making Frost, I would make the odds on any given scavenge action vary by the territory. But furthermore, I would then show it in this dead space right here, and return. And again, that would give each territory more character, wouldn't it? <sighs> Jerome Bodin, let's talk. I have an idea for you. If he's if he hasn't already done that. But I do seem to be getting a lot of wood in a way that I wasn't before. Alright, let's just take a draw here and let's see what we got. Do we want to send some scavengers? Right. Chris Markinson that wonders, is that an 11th commandment of board games? It is not, Chris Markinson, because in a board game, you can't get away with hiding mechanics under the hoods, under the hood, because the player has to know the mechanics, because the player can't execute them unless he knows them. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not yelling at you, uh, Chris Markinson. I'm yelling at Jerome Bodin, who has undermined a fantastic design with something that's really bothering me. And undermined only partially. But yeah, that's not a board gaming commandment, because there's no way you can violate that commandment in a board gaming, is there? Yeah. Uh, Hazy Tillow says, has anyone compared this to Guild of Dungeoneering yet? Uh, Guild of Dungeoneering yet, I, I liked but had some issues with, but it is very similar to that. That kind of uh, line-drawing art style and the, the whiteness is also very similar to Guild of Dungeoneering, isn't it? As I, as I recall. But a uh, great comparison, Hazy Silhouette, yeah. Um, Richard Holt uh, puts this in a, uh, a nice little turn of phrase. He says, when you hide mechanics like that, are you then playing the game, or is the game playing you? Right. Very nice, Richard Holt. All right, let's get back to the business at hand, which is namely crossing this tundra. Uh, and remember, if we reach the refuge, what will happen is we just don't do this countdown anymore, uh, but we still have to deal with farming. And what is farming again? Oh, gathering food, but no, we keep running into wood. See, that's another cool thing. Yeah, imagine this, you guys. What if the scavenge percentage, the scavenge odds, were based on a region? That would then make scouting certain regions even more important. That would lend that would lend those eyeball icons even more value. Uh, Jerome Bodine, if you haven't already done this, please do it. And show us, for Pete's sake. All right, what am I doing? Uh, walking across the tundra, basically. Uh, am I sending these guys to scavenge? Yes, absolutely. You know what? No, because I think it's just good. Let's test this. If I keep getting wood, let's just test it, because I don't think I'm going to pass. Well, fatigue, all right, that's going to happen. Hmm. Let's draw a card. Let's uh, do a lot of crazy redrawing here. A lot of redrawing. Cyclar I wonder if you get an infinite redraw in this game. How does it prevent that? Oh, because you're burning the wood, right? Well, could you... I don't know. All right. Uh, let's see. Do we want to risk getting more wood? I haven't been keeping count of how much wood is in my deck, because I'm talking to you jokers. <clears throat> see, now it's giving me food. Okay. So much for my stupid idea. <clears throat> now, that draw was from my deck. It wasn't added to my deck. Uh, uh, all right, let's just walk across this tundra. Hills. Lots of survivors and a modicum of food. You don't need wood for hills. If we go to a campsite and just discard a survivor, we have a chance of adding wood to our deck, which we're not going to do. Here's a singer to bring in more survivors. Kind of like that. Remember, we want to get food for farming. We've been doing... Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm calling foul. Gather 16 food. I scavengered a couple of times and got food. Is that not what this means? 
Jerome Bodine, I'm getting angry. Didn't I? I scavenged and got food. Shouldn't that be decrementing this, this requirement? Okay, I'm about to throw this game through the window. And actually, the only reason this makes me mad is because I really like this game. If I didn't like this game, I couldn't care less about those things. Uh, oh, should I have rested? I forget how much fatigue is on my deck. Chris Markinson says, do you need to drop the, the food into the farm area? If that's the case, Chris Markinson, the odds of running into a farm event and having enough... Uh, if that's what I assume you're asking. Having enough stuff to activate that event, doing it 16 times while you're in one place, and this is getting closer to you every time. Because remember, each time you travel, this scooches up. It seems very unlikely. So I'm guessing, you know, even at this point, I'm wondering, could it be a bug? Did I gather it and I'm just not getting credit for it? Or am I just not understanding what this verb is, is about? Or maybe you're right, Chris Markinson, and this is just that unlikely to accomplish. I don't know. I mean, we are playing on hard. Look at all this stupid wood in my deck. I would love to buy something with wood. All right. Um, okay, well, hopefully we can draw a survivor, which will get us past these stupid hills. Yes, good. All right, so let's get credit to pass the hills. Do we want to buy these supplies? I'm worried the supplies are just going to give us a ton of wood. This might be helpful to get the wood out of our deck, but we only have one wood right now. Uh, yeah, I'd like to buy this to get wood of our, out of our deck, and then we could power, you know, we could use the wood to get rid of fatigue. Uh, I'm a little bit... Do we want a singer? Let's get a singer. I forget if it's wise not to burn survivors and food, but we're going to do it anyway. <clears throat> Alright, and then let's burn a food and see if we can get survivors. So, X in that situation was 1. You know, okay, I'm again, I'm about to raise an objection. Okay, so I have a 75% chance to add X survivors. Shouldn't X be a constant value? Like, right, this is the variability, right? Whether or not it's even going to happen. Is there then further variability here? Like, X says to me it's a fixed value, or am I just misunderstanding how algebra works? And if X is 1, which I know it's not, because I've gotten more than one survivor from a singer before. All right, again, Jerome Bodine, the only reason that this is bothering me is because I really like the game. Okay. I've lost track of how precious survivors are, but let's check out the hills. Oh, my God, would the freaking... Oh, well, look, look. Let's cash it in for a shelter. All right, that works for me. All right, let's travel. Sid says, gather might mean generate from cards. Which means, like, using the extractor, using the plant pot. Sid, you might have a very good point. Oh my god, Chris Markinson has a fantastic idea, and I bet he's right. Which is, I bet what this chevron here means. Gather might mean drop it into this bucket, and that's what he mentioned before. Right. Chris Markinson, I don't, I don't like to cuss on this podcast, but I think this, uh, right now, merits cussing. Chris Markinson, you're a goddamn genius. All right, well, now's the time to gather food, because, look, oh, but we don't want to burn wood. <sighs> Stupid cliff. Uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, how much wood is in our deck? Here's an interesting thing, and I don't know if it does this on hard. I've seen it do this before. If you ever get to the point where you have invested underneath a region a certain number of resources, and you don't have any survivors. Like, if I put all my survivors under here, and I don't have enough resources in my deck to satisfy these requirements, a window pops up that says, hey, dummy, you are now in a dead end. You do not have the resources in your deck to get to satisfy the requirement. Furthermore, you don't have the survivors to scavenge to maybe add more resources. Do you now want to take the survivors out from under your deck? Now, it says that, but here's the thing. If this was a physical board game, I would not know that. So that's one of the things that makes me wonder about the viability of porting this to a physical board game. Like, you would have to do something to track what's in your deck, maybe? Because otherwise you could get in a dead-end loop and not know you're there. But it is a video game, so at this point I'm okay with it alerting me of that. All right, so let's see. I, uh, uh, oh, so here's a, here's a plant pot which we could use to then... 
Oh, yeah, okay, let's try this, because I just... I think we're going to die, but let's see if this... Yeah, Chris Markinson, like I said, a GD genius. Oh, uh, shoot a monkey. All right, well, we need to gather wood. I'm just gonna, No, we've got plenty of wood in our deck. I should have done that, all right. Ugh, for Pete's sake. See, now we got food at the wazoo. Well, not at the wazoo. I mean, it's one, but we don't need it. Hmm. All right. Yeah, the one time I want wood. All right, I'm not going to send you to scavenge because you're probably just going to bring me some damn thing I don't need. Uh, do I want a bird on wood to skim? I really hope there's a thing where the region determines the scavenge odds and I hope that it gets put right up here clearly written. I furthermore even hope that it shows you the die roll. It's because that's how I roll. I like to see die rolls. Aha! Here, oh, okay, no, this is not survivalist plural. This is just the one survivalist. We know how to deal with him. All right, to get through subterranean, as we all know, if you want to get through a cave, you need to bring with you two logs and an apple. Well, first of all, let's use the shelter to get rid of our fatigue. Oh, I think we have a lot of logs, so let's just cycle a bunch of cards. Yeah, let's get rid of... Okay, so if we burn the cleaver, we can drive the survivalist away, and the cleaver is just giving us wood. We can also burn the cleaver to get wood. Well, we know there's no other way to get... Do we want to burn food? Again, I don't remember how we're doing on food. All right, let's just burn the cleaver to say goodbye to the survivalist. We'll do that. You... Because if I was a game designer, I almost... You know, I would make it where, hey, you can't find wood underground. There are no trees growing down there. You can find mushrooms, so food, yeah. Uh, okay, let's scavenge. See? Mushrooms. Uh, what to do with this? Take it on a gift certificate. Oh, no, no, farm it. Oh, shoot. Now, wait, is this getting it out of our... So does this mean discarding it or burning it? Hmm. Jerome Bodine, when you put a verb in a board game, the verb needs to be explained to the player. All right, well, I think we're going to die, but let's... I don't think we're going to be... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, okay, so it does, it does mean get rid of it. We're definitely sacrificing food. All right. Still Jerome Bodine. I would have liked to have known that here. Uh, let's see. Nothing to do with our turn. All right. There's our wood. Uh, is there anything we want to buy? Yes, the extractor. Don't we? I'd rather have the plant pot, frankly. All right. You scavenge. If you bring us the food, we're going to use it to buy a plant pot. Blech. Nothing. All right. Let's travel. Swamp. We haven't seen that before. Yeah, at the very least, if it did affect scavenging, when you right-click, it should say. God, I really hope it does that. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, let's just cycle a bunch of cards. Let's get rid of a fatigue, which is good. Let's drop a couple of survivors into the swamp with an apple. Froststorm is getting close to us. Singer. Oh, good. Good work, Singer. Uh, scavenge? See, because again, it would let me know, do I want to scavenge here or save this guy until uh, scavenging in a more hospitable place than a swamp? Chris Markinson said the stream froze on him. He thinks it was happened because I dropped the food in the farm. Chris Markinson, when you put food in a farm, uh, it burns it. Which is kind of counter counterintuitive, right? When you're putting food at a farm, it, uh, it it's investing it, and it comes back later. So you need a lot of wood to cross a river because you make a bridge. So we will definitely be doing that action. Uh, we'll be spending a...
food. We'll get a 50% chance to get a food from there, and let's end our turn. The frost is getting close. All right, let's do that. You scavenge. Wait, what? Oh, cannibals. I wasn't even paying attention. You should pay attention when there are cannibals <laughs> nearby. Uh, yeah, don't let cannibals sneak up on you. Never a good idea. Uh, I'm almost thinking take a point of damage because we have to do it for this requirement. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Because Jerome Bodine can't be arsed to tell me how some of the game rules work. Again, apologies, Jerome. I'm just I'm just venting because I really like your design. Uh, we're going to travel and take the hit from the cannibals to see if we can sacrifice a survivor next turn and whether or not that, that uh, satisfies this health loss thing. It's got to, right? Because there's no other way to lose 12 health. Okay, so... What does this say? Card, the effect will apply on it. Uh, so, before we travel... Is there anything we want to buy up here? We could get a trader. Mm. Or a picker. Let's get a picker. I like how bold the picker's thing is here. Uh, let's just draw, see if we get anything worthwhile. Ooh, let's do the picker action. Alright, nothing happened. Oh, it was a 50% chance. Alright, let's travel and see if we can burn a survivor. And we drew one, so here we go. Let's see if this goes down from 11 to 10. Seriously? How am I ever going to lose 12 hit points when I only have 3? Presumably later in the game there's something that regenerates hit points, but seriously? Oh, I'm about to rage quit this game. I'm so about to rage quit this game. And ironically, I'm about to rage quit it because I like it. All right, to get past the lake, you need three apples and a log. It'd be nice to have an acid guy in our deck to poke any cannibals or wolves or scavengers who show up. Uh, lost track of how much food I have. Actually, can I look down here? That's kind of helpful. Every now and then, check your discard pile and see what's in there. Let's see how many cards are left in our draw deck. Oh, Jerome Bodine doesn't tell us. All right. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, let's just get a bunch more cards in our hand. Uh, let's do that. Let's scavenge. Because you, yeah, you would think in a lake you would find a lot of food. So far, it's interesting. No one has died, even though we're playing on hard. There we go, and I think next turn... Oh, it would have been nice to do that. I wasn't really paying attention. All right, here we go. Still a nice, a nice bit in advance of the frost. All right, yeah, now where's my fatigue? Uh, okay, let's do this. Shoot a monkey. To get a mess of this and maybe get a fatigue card. Yeah, good, we wanted that. All right, now it would have been nice to get a wood, but let's do this, see if it gives us wood. Yes, it does, and then we need a food... Mm, nope, that's not what I wanted. Ah, all right. <laughs> yeah. All right, if we get the food, there we go. Oh, I could have used it to burn fatigue cards. Let's look at our discard pile. I guess you just want to check here every now and then. Uh, I'm playing in a window right now, so it's a little bit weird to have to come down here and position it just correctly. If you're playing full screen, just drag to the bottom of the screen. Oh, even... Even when I drag it off screen. Oh, I guess there's a delay there, which I kind of wish wasn't there. Now, survival is plural. And I don't know what this is, but whatever it is, I can't do it because I don't have this little dialogue over here that was in the mediator scenario. Maybe a mediator. I'm guessing... Here's my prediction. A mediator is a card that you unlock that gives you this resource, which seems awfully specialized at this point in the game. So if I was a game designer, I would make the mediator also give you something else. All right, you just need two food to get past a plane. Planes are pretty hospitable. We all know that. We can buy a torch. Oh, that's by the Yasagai. Um, and we need two food. So you'd think you find a lot of food in a plane. Nope, we found a log in a plane. Makes no sense. Oh, good lord. All right, well. All right. Um... Yeah. Ooh. Oh, shoot. Let's try this, right? Yeah. Sweet. Good picking. Uh, any survivalists? I don't know. Maybe we'll just... Uh, oh, shoot. Did... Oh, we have a spear, but it takes two spears. Uh, the spear, the Asagai, if you burn it, you get two arrows. Richard Holt claims, and he doesn't offer any 
uh, evidence for this. He's just claiming it. That he beat Frost on easy. Huh. Interesting claim, Richard. Uh, I find it conspicuous that you don't have any uh, way to prove that. Oh, wait, we do, we do want to beat this because it gives us treasure. Hmm. All right, well, let's uh, shoot a monkey. Well, that happened. No, that's not in the turn. I don't like how close to us the frost is. Uh, nothing to buy. So, alright, we're just going to travel, take a point of damage to a survivor. Uh, yeah, which one of these guys do we want to kill? This guy looks the weirdest. Okay. On a plane. Isn't that a Nirvana song, by the way? On a plane. On a plane, you need two apples. And look here. The farmer. See? Farm, farm you would think, but no, it means invest. Oh, so we'll do this, we'll do that, and I guess we'll do that. I just feel like it's a losing battle. Actually, you know, we're doing okay. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, let's check our extractor. We'll do that. I don't want to burn, all I don't want to go too crazy with burning food, so be careful. Uh, yeah, nothing more. Okay. Atega! The thing about tegas is that when you scavenge in a tega, you have a greater chance of finding... Oh, no, you don't, as far as we know, because the game doesn't tell us. Look here! Hi, wolf! Oh, you think you're fierce? Haha. Uh -huh. Alright, let's see. With wood, there's nothing... There no Wood gives us no ideas. Alright, you go scavenge in the tega, let me know what you find. Hey, you found a dude, and you got tired. Oh, shoot! I forgot tegas need dudes. Alright. I'm inclined to rest. <coughs> was that a bad choice? No, it wasn't. Because look, it was an excellent choice. Bleh, stupid log. Chris Markinson said it'd be nice if you killed the wolf; it would give you food. Right? I could see that. Like, that's the reward. Like, maybe just one food. You eat the wolf. Very thematic, Chris Markinson. I like that. Alright, so, uh, let's see. What, what is going on? Okay, first of all, we're going to stay in the shelter and get rid of fatigue. I would love one more food. Uh, whatever your name is, go bring me food. Alright. Oh, we could get cannibalism. I shouldn't have done Alright, well, let's draw. Yeah, always with the frickin' wood. Alright, look here. The frost storm is about to be right on our butts. Oh, so this is telling me when this fills up, you have to discard one. Uh, you can only have five, so you have to discard one of them. Uh, what? Well, I don't really care. We're not going to really buy. Um, I, yeah, why am I fussing over this? Yeah, you, goodbye. All right, we need one food. There it is. Is there anything we need to buy before we move on? Another another spear? I feel like if there might be more dangerous event cards in here. Let's get a second spear. Let's buy the cannibalism just in case. We're not actually using it yet. It's just an option. We're putting cannibalism on the table. Right? We're not actually doing it. Uh, let's check the extractor. There's nothing in it. Uh, let's travel. And finally, that frost was right on our butt. I am not comfortable with how close. Give me an easy region so we can outrun the frost. Not as easy as I would like. Uh, normally I would rest here, but then it would only give us one turn to get over the river. Now do I do? Yeah, I gotta do this just because the odds will be with. Shoot a monkey. Uh, okay, we gotta do that, and that'll give us a wood. So as long as we get one wood in the next draw, we're okay. Great. The one time I need wood, you jackballs are going to make me burn a food at the tool makers. Alright, we're going to cross the river. Before we cross the river... Is this, is this foolish? Yeah, I got one food on it. Whatever. Uh, put it in the farm? No, you know what? We, we're about to die. We need to be super careful. We'll feed the farm later. Let's worry about the frost storm. Alright, the tundra... Yikes. We need more food than we're getting. Okay, so let's do... Oh, shoot. Uh, 
So we have some options. If we burn this to draw a bunch more cards, we can maybe get another wood to power the extractor. We can send him to scavenge. Like, oh no, we need to send him here. That's... there's no question about that. Alright, let's do this. Dad gummit! Dad, dad gummit! Oh, okay, well we still have a 50% chance, but then... Yeah, I was just hoping we could get a little head start on the, on the stupid frost thing. Alright, give me a food. Just just one food. That's all I... Oh my god, instead you got me a fatigue. Alright. This could be our last turn. Uh, Alright, we have to eat people. <laughs> you guys don't tell anyone that that happened. Uh, let's just draw a card, see if we can get something here. This frost storm is right on our tail. Uh, anything worth buying? No, nothing we can really buy. Might as well draw a C. Oh, great. Um, all right. Hazy Silhouette asks if I'm Iron Manning it. Hazy Silhouette, you can't save scum this. If I quit out of this, my only option is to continue. Although maybe there's a file somewhere you could really you could cheat with. Uh, oh, yikes. All right, this could be dire. So we have a lot of wood that's not helping us. What can we spend it on? The torch isn't going to do any good. And that wolf there. The wolf is the least of our problems. All right, we're going to be one uh, ahead of the storm. <sighs> Should I bother with the torch and then scout? Let's just do it, because I just... I, I don't like all the wood in my deck. All right, let's look at the events. So choose the next event. We'll have tool makers. Uh, the shelter can't do it. All right, we're gonna have. We need a food and a survivor, and we're okay. And with this guy, we'll send him to scavenge on the wet tundra. Oh, and let's throw it in the farm. No, no, we're not gonna throw anything in the farm yet. So we need to outrun this stupid storm. Uh, yeah, I don't care if the wolf bites me. Fine. You know what? I'm going to take it. I wanted to take it there anyway. Look at all the spears and the to- <sighs> Okay, I think we're going to die. I do not think I will be able to show you guys any more of Frost after this turn. I predict our demise in these hills as we are overcome by the Frost Storm. Hmm. Left Empty said, you can get back the dude you ate for one food with survivors. What? Uh, Left Empty is advising me of some math that I obviously missed. Alright, let's go th Yeah, we gotta do that, right? Alright, this is tough. Next turn, we are need we need three survivors. I don't even know if we have three in our deck. We need three survivors and a food. Otherwise, and that's gonna be with a hand of five cards. Otherwise, we are overrun by the frost storm and we die. Here we go. Good luck to us all. Mm -hmm. It's not over yet. Excuse me. <coughs> uh, let's burst. Okay, because we've got fire. Let's burn some survivors. We've got one survivor. Uh, shoot, what can we do? Well, okay, well, that's... All right, so let's see. We can burn... We just need... So that's one survivor. We could burn... Is this going to give... No, nothing there to give us survivor. Yeah, I think we're dead. I think this is the end of our playthrough on hard. Well, let's, let's, mm, let's at least get one more in the farm. Uh, yeah. Oh, shoot. No, yeah, yeah. Should we eat the picker? Or send the picker into the hills? Let's eat the picker and then put two more in the farm. <laughs> there we go. Richard Holt says, it seems like it gets harder the more cards you've unlocked. It does, Richard Holt, and I think that's part of the intent, and that's part of how it teaches you the game. Some board games come this way, where when you, uh, you break down the board game, you read the rules, and the rules say, hey, uh, put these advanced pieces aside, don't play with these, play the basic game. Once you play the basic game, go to the full game. I don't tend to like that. Uh, I just like having the full game dropped in my lap. I'm okay with that. Some people aren't comfortable with that, so I understand that's why board games do that. Uh, but I think this is the video game analog to that, uh, rather than just dumping the full game in your lap. And I kind of wish there was an option, like in maybe the, the scenarios or something, uh, to just say, hey, here's every single card in a game mode, have at it. Um, but then again, Hand of Fate did this very well. 
there's a sense that you're collecting cards. In the Hand of Fate, you could literally, I mean, the interface showed you opening a case. There was a case that literally held all the cards in your collection as you unlocked them, and you could look over what you had. Uh, and I think that's what, uh, what this game is going for. All right, we have gotten as close as we can to winning. We were 11 kilometers out, only nine more food to farm, and we would have survived, but here we go. Oh, see all these little blue streaks? Uh, yeah, those lines? That's showing you that, uh, dude, there's a frost storm right on your butt. Here's our death. Now, do we unlock anything when we lose? Oh, new scenario. And tools! Okay, this is all... A grizzly bear! Oh my god, yeah, Richard Holt is saying it seems like it gets harder as you play. Look! A freaking grizzly bear! What is tools? So... I'm unclear on... I'm unclear on this. Oh, oh, I... No. Oh, okay, right. You buy it for two wood, you discard a survivor, and then when you discard it, it gives you two wood. So a tools card is the equivalent of two material, or, or wood cards. Very cool. Now, new scenario, because I'm a little confused when it's saying new scenario, because these are scenarios, but there were also characters, right? And you'll note there's not anything new. There's just the leader and the mediator. But it just said new scenario, didn't it? Now, and it's not the classic game, because that's always easy, medium, hard, endless. Where's this new scenario of which it speaks? It's not in the tutorial, it's not in the options. So, uh, I'm a little unclear about that, that language. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Frost by Le Studio des Ténèbres, which I think means the Studio of the Shadows. Uh, uh, Jerome Bodin is the, the designer of this. Uh, a, a really lovely, cool deck builder meets survival game that you play in solitaire with a cool minimalist art style uh, and a, I like this icy aesthetic um, and very difficulty levels a good appeal to the instinct to collect that a lot of people who play card games might enjoy uh, not an iOS game uh, it is a, a PC only game um, available on Steam uh, and there you go so thanks for joining me tomorrow we will be playing inside from the developers of Limbo and at 7 p.m. tomorrow uh, even if you just want to duck in for that, we will have a random drawing in which six people will each win a game, four of which, at least, do not suck. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up. I'm much obliged when you do that. Uh, we are a little bit around 100 subscribers away from me drinking a beer live on the air. And who knows what's going to happen when that happens, because I don't drink, and I hate beer, and I promise I'll even do it on an empty stomach. That's right. I will drink a beer on the air on an empty stomach when we hit 1,000 subscribers. You can find me on Twitter at QT3. You can find the stuff I write at quarterto3.com. Uh, I've got a Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash tomchick. Uh, thank you guys for watching, uh, and I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow for a little bit of inside. Thanks.